All right, I have to admit something to you. I sometimes get sucked into skincare routines on social media, you know, Instagram, TikTok, and sometimes the stuff is just so outlandish, but then I'm like, but wait, does it really work? Uh, well, we saw something when it comes to skincare, and it was actually putting snail slime on your face, and that it was actually a good thing, and I thought, I have to see if this whole thing is legit. So with me now is Dr. Allison Boucher. She's a dermatologist at Henry Ford Health. Allison, it's great to see you. Thanks for being with me on this one. Thanks for having me. Okay, as a dermatologist, when you scroll through social media and you see all of these things, do you hold your head and say, oh my gosh, the amount of weird information that's out there is staggering? Yes, so it depends on which thing you're looking at, but um, there's definitely some trends that I can get behind and there's some that I definitely would not recommend. All right, so let's get started with the snail slime one because you got to answer that one straight off. What are people talking about? What is it? Yes, so snail mucin, as it's often called, is actually just like it sounds. It's the slime that is naturally secreted by snails. And so where can people actually get this? Yes, yeah, so there's lots of retailers. You can obviously find anything on the internet, but a couple of places that I recommend looking are places like Target or Ulta Beauty are places that you can find reliable brands. So tell me why this actually could be effective. This is actually one of those, it doesn't sound great, but it can be helpful. Yes, yeah, so snail mucin actually has a lot of potential helpful ingredients. It has hyaluronic acid, which we know can serve as a great moisturizer. So for those of you that suffer with dry skin, it can be very helpful. It also has antimicrobial properties, which can be helpful for those of us that suffer from acne or rosacea. And it even has peptides that may help build collagen or elastin in the skin. Let's talk about some of the things that you do see online from influencers and we talk about trends that people um, are looking at with their skin this, uh, this year. It's like skin minimalism or skin flooding, which is hydrating. Would you recommend some of those things or what are some of your patients saying? Yeah, so skin minimalism, I love. I think um, you hit the nail on the head with all of these trends on social media and TikTok. A lot of us are overwhelmed. We may have drawers with 20 different products and we don't know which ones we should be using. So skin minimalism is a great place to start. Get a few products that you know are going to work. Um, start there and do a regimen that you can keep up with and something that you can tolerate. Um, of course, the number one ingredient that we should all be using is sunscreen. Every day, um, I know a lot of my patients in Michigan say, it's gray outside in the winter, there's no sun, it doesn't matter. Sunscreen is the best thing you can do for your skin. Um, there's really no magic potion that can erase um, the amount of damage that the sun can do to us. What about some of the dangers though from some skin advice from influencers and what have you seen from patients in your office that have come in saying, well, I decided to put rubbing alcohol on my face every day for 20 days and some of the things that maybe you've had to walk back and re-educate people on. Yeah, so I do see a lot of people um, finding different things on social media that they can use to say treat an acne pimple. And a lot of these things can actually cause um, inflammation in the skin. So you can see rashes, um, sometimes even discoloration like light spots or dark spots left over from some of these treatments, or in some unfortunate cases, even scarring from some of these things. So it's really best to talk to a medical professional if you have something that you're trying to treat. Some of the things that I've seen on Allison and maybe you can talk about or maybe some of the things that you should warn people against is like that sunscreen contouring, like maybe looking for burns on your face in a contoured way and maybe teenagers using retinol. Talk to us a little bit about some of those things to, to watch out for. Yes, definitely. So sunscreen contouring, um, such a scary thing. Um, that is when people apply sunscreen to certain portions of their face to maybe get a tanning response in the areas that you would typically bronze or contour on your face. Um, like I said, sunscreen is really the most important thing that we can do. Um, a lot of our patients know that a sunburn is damage to the sun, but a tanning response is also damage to your skin um, and something that you know can't be reversed. So we do recommend sunscreen all over. Um, and there's so many great options for contouring, whether it's cosmetics, um, sunless tanners that are out there that are going to be much safer than UV damage caused by the sun. 
Um, and then you mentioned retinols and teenagers. So teenagers getting into skincare has been a huge TikTok social media phenomenon. Um, and really retinols in a teenager um, who you know doesn't have acne or oily skin yet, um, they're actually gonna have side effects from those retinols. So they can have a lot of dryness to the skin, um, dermatitis, which is skin inflammation from those um, products. And it's something that they don't need to be using. So um, a side effect without any benefit. Yeah, so if you've got a good dermatologist, you go see Dr. Boucher. If you've got questions that you saw something online, maybe vet it through a doctor first before you start using it on your face. Dr. Allison Boucher from Henry Ford Health, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate this one, and it's a good reminder for people to start getting their skin checks, too. It's always good to have your skin checked out. Thank you so much for having me. All right, take care. Have a good one.